Today we're going to replace the core and a power head on this TXP. First and foremost, you got to see what kind of TXP it is. So if I scrape off this ice right there, probably impossible to see on my camera, but there's actually an SB over here. Darn near impossible to see right there. You can actually see it like SBQ. So that's a, yeah, right there. You can see the B, the Q, and there's an S. SBQ right there. So that's a S balance port Q body. Okay? So we know it's a balance port body that's going to be significant to uh, the core that we have. So what do I do? Well, this is a loop system. So that means that right underneath the case, you got the pipes. So I turned off this pipe, and now we're letting. All the refrigerant run through, do its thing, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our recovery machine and we're gonna recover it from here over into that suction, and you'll see in a second. I'm up at the rack, oh, all right, I'm up at the rack here, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is, so I know that this is the rack that that circuit's on, I wanna clean and oil the TXV while it's open, so I'm at the, the oil separator, the oil reservoir, and all I'm gonna do is take a deli cup, put it underneath it, and I can't really do it with one hand, but I'm just gonna crack it the littlest bit and let some oil go. Just like that, that's all you need, something like that. Just enough to just, you know, touch the bottom. The reason I wanna use this oil is because I know it's the same kind of oil. You know, might as well. I mean, I guess you could just read the rack, get your own jug of oil in your truck, but this way I don't have to carry tons of jugs of oil. Also, I don't wanna open a jug of oil in my truck. I don't want moisture and other contaminants to get into it. Got my oil, we're gonna go downstairs and pump that system down. Okay, so what did I do? So I hooked up there, hook up to my gauges, open them up, so hook it up into my recovery machine, again, in, the gauges go in, it sucks it in, out, goes out into the suction side down there. So, um, also, just to kind of note, that this is actually the wrong circuit I valved off, but it's on the same system, so I was able to recover it into this system. The actual circuit is behind it, behind the case, actually, um, there's a whole nother set of ball valves way back there on the other side that had to turn off So I turned those off, but I still was able to recover it because you know, that's just the suction side of the same system So it's fine to do but I'll show you. There's the case We'll just walk around really quick Show you the back side. There it is right down there. So this is the other side This is where it actually valves off of and I could see that because I could see it go down to the bottom I just traced out the pipe and Real quick, I just wanted to mention and just kind of throw this in there. So the first thing I do is I valve off just the liquid side. That way, so remember, high goes to low. So let's say this is 180 PSI. This is 65 PSI. Okay, we got a high, we'll go to low. So naturally, just bobbing off only the liquid will pump down that entire liquid line to match your suction pressure of 65. After this, after we've given it a certain amount of time and it's pumped down to about 65, right, what I do is then I now ball valve off this um, suction side, right? And now you see it's isolated. This side and this side is now isolated from the actual rack. So if we follow these bow valves off, it'll eventually go to the rack. Now in my video, I said, oh, I, I hooked up to the wrong one because there is actually two circuits next to each other. If you look at my video, there's two sandwich cases, one sandwich case there, and then there's a slightly larger one over there. Okay, I'm working on this one right there. Now, I accidentally ball, ball valved off this one up here. So and then I found, oh, okay, it ends up the right one was behind it. Okay, so and then I ball valved them off like such. And then what I did was I had my gauges hooked up here, okay, on the, on the suction side of my circuit. And then I had them hooked into, if we go over here, right, on the other circuit, the, the sandwich case next to it, I had my recovery machine plugged in to the back side of this ball valve heading off to the rack on the suction side. Rack. Okay. Why did I do this? Because they're both on the same system. They're both part of the same loop rack refrigeration system. Okay. So I can just pump the refrigerant out of here into this suction side and it all stays in the system. So I just pump this refrigerant out with my recovery machine into this other line on this case next door so let's say if this case was f4 right this case is f5 so i pumped all the refrigerant out of f4 into the line on f5 why did i do that because it was easier to set up with realistically i could have just 
plugged into the port on the opposite side of the ball valve down there i could have just plugged my recovery machine and pumped it in up there and it would have gone to the rack but it was just easier and more convenient for me to do this just wanted to interject this in the video so you understand what i'm doing well, i'm already going to replace that takes uh power head so i have it right there so i'm actually just gonna cut the power head line right now just to do it just to so i was just go with some head in there if they ask that guy to do something like that so i'm just getting rid of that so now i can turn that so it'll be free some of you might say, why are you replacing the power head? Obviously it was filled with charge, it's good to go, so why are you replacing it? Because if we're gonna do this whole work to take apart the valve, we might as well replace common components that have issues. So if you look at over there, you can see the charge is yellow. Okay, so we're gonna replace it with the yellow charge right here, which is AA, and I can tell you how to estimate that charge at the end of the video, we'll go over that. So this is an AA, sorry, core, right, yellow. To yellow so we're gonna take that off half inch ratchet over there we're gonna put it on and take it off the ratchet did not work very good so i'm just using a normal wrench on it it's working fine so just hook it on to the end pushing it forward so i took out that core right there it goes right in the front i'm gonna take out this guy as you see it's coming out like so dun, dun, dun. right out from there yeah, there's a spring right there. And there's some be one more thing in there maybe. Oh, maybe not. Nothing in there it seems like. Alright, so I'm gonna take out this screen over there. So that's just a I believe it's a 5-8. It's always a 5-8 for the screen. And sometimes you want want to carry one of these little profile fins. It helps. So anyway, we're gonna take out that now. Actually that little piece in there as well. Take out the TXV um, we're going to take it out the TXV screen so I loosened it up a bit we're going to take this out so now we have the TXV screen good way to check if it's plugged to hold it up to the light as you can see you can see through it so this isn't really plugged um, this thing actually doesn't look very dirty but uh, we're going to replace these pots and get it going so and clean them because you should just clean them because you should anyway so we're just going to use this degreasing solvent HVAC R degreasing solvent somebody asked and you kale gone I don't know but somebody asked what kind of degreaser I use and I use this degreaser sometimes when I go to FW web I use another degreaser when I go to United um, they have them there so we're just going to degrease these components so I'm also going to spray it into the housing as well so all of these things have been decreased. Now we're going to lube it up in the oil we just got from the roof right here. Lube it all up and we'll put it back in place. Except this cartridge. This cartridge is no good. We're going to put this one in now. So obviously put oil over everything. Threads, gaskets. Okay, you can just take your fingers. Sorry, it's hard to record and do it. Take your fingers, put it inside the valve. All over the threads on these things. Okay, just really make sure that it's thoroughly oiled before you put it back together, okay? So now we're going to put everything back, so we're going to start with the cartridge. Well, out like it did with mine, and now you're concerned with how do I put it back together correctly, right? We can just go to this Bolin Bulletin 122, okay? And, um... What you're going to do is you're going to look and you're going to go to the table of contents and you're going to see Q and BQ series is page 11 through 13. So we're just going to go to 11 through 13 and we're going to get it out of this stupid mode that it's in. Let me get to 11, 2, page 11, right? So we're going to just see, as you can see right here. That, that back part or that pin carrier is going to fit right into the spring so the spring is going to go around that little hump and while this one doesn't seem to have a, um, a pointed like arrow side to it yeah it looks more like this so the spring guide fits in right like so so obviously I was concerned with making sure that this guide was put in correctly by our bulletin that we just looked at we can see goes in this way 
goes in like so. So this is just gonna be popped in like so. And then we can put this on behind it like so. There we go, remove the old power head and now we're gonna replace this in there. We're gonna take a little bit of that oil, rub it inside there and just screw it on and put the power head back where it was. Okay, so now this is on, that's there, so we're gonna pull a vacuum and uh, we're gonna see how it pulls the vacuum and then we're gonna spray with a leaky bubbles and see how it works. Now while that thing's pulling the vacuum, I just wanna show you this ID tag right here. It comes inside with these cartridges you need. Well, you're supposed to put this around the power head so if somebody knows what size cartridge is in there. Unfortunately, the last person that put on you know, put in this TXV never did that. Like so, if you know a better way to do it, let me know. But just like so, AA. Now somebody knows. Hopefully, in 10 years or however long it is, they need to replace it. So we're just uh, waiting for that vacuum to pull. See how it's going to go. So after you pull your vacuum of you know 500 microns, and then you wait for it to you know see if it goes down dramatically or whatever, we're gonna go over and we're just gonna valve open the suction side. And then we're going to leach check the soapy bubbles. So you can see we've got a little bit of pressure in there, 25 psi. Just going to feel around. Doesn't seem to be nothing happening. We'll take some soap bubbles, spray it on it. Just going to make sure, you know, don't want leaks. In all seriousness, a leak like this, let me tell you, it can really, like, believe it or not, it can like take, you know, Yeah, that's good to go. But believe it or not, a leak like that can like seriously um, I'll, like empty your rack out if you're not careful. So now we're just gonna valve on the liquid and check again. So again, that seems fine. Come over here, spray it. Spray the area, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Everything looks good, no bubbles. I don't feel no bubbles, I don't hear no bubbles, nothing. Okay, so now we're gonna check superheat. So this is a southern case, so I downloaded the, you know, I downloaded the document, uh, you know, installation, maintenance, you know, I'm gonna just go down to the table of contents and you're gonna see over here on the normal refrigeration information, right here, superheat setting, 17, BTU information, 16. These are both things we'll wanna be concerned with. So we're going to go to those pages and take a look. So you can see now on page 17 we're on, you can see the superheat right there. It says plus 5 degrees of superheat. Okay, so now if you look at it, right, you can see we've got a temperature probe right there. It just goes into EVAP coil, everything goes through the whole EVAP coil, comes out right there. This is on the outside, 10 degrees of superheat. So it's five degrees too warm. So we're gonna open the TXV just a little bit and uh, see how that works. Anyway, while I'm waiting for the superheat to adjust, I wanted to show you guys how to kind of pick your TXV here. So this is a Sporlin, uh, you know, Q, port, Q body build sheet. You know, you just type it into the Google. I'm sure you'll find it. There is some number associated with it. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, if you come down to the cartridge sizes down here, right? So I have a BQ body here, right? I showed you that in the beginning of the video. So BQ right there, right? And you come over here to your sizing chart, you see, and then you look over there and you go, what kind of refrigerant do I got? Well, I'm using 507, right? And so typically what you would do is you go to the case manual and the case manual would have like, oh, you know, this case is a half a ton case or so many BTU case or whatever. This time it didn't have that. So we just estimated. And then so from there, okay, if it doesn't have that at the case, what would you do? Well, you can look on the tag on the TXV. That's really where your bread and butter is going to be is that tag on the TXV. You know, you might want to double check and make sure the tag matches your case specs. But you're going to just check, okay, the tag and the case specs, okay, whatever, right? So I looked at the tag. There wasn't any tag there. So we had to estimate it based on similar size cases that we've used. So we actually bought one of each kind of cartridge. So we actually used this quarter through a third 
and then half through one. Okay, so we used an AA cartridge and an A cartridge, and then when I took it out, I looked at the cartridge and saw that it was the yellow cartridge. So that's how I concluded that we're going to use that one for it. Okay, so now from there, the, the superheat is down to 7.5. Okay, you can see that the superheat value right there, down to 7.5. And we come over here, it's at temperature. So it's at temperature, it's at 7.5, so we're just going to leave it that way. Because realistically, what are we going to gain from putting down the superheat 2 degrees? Yeah, it might make the refrigerant a little cooler going back to our compressors, which will be good, obviously. But sometimes these things are so finicky. If it's holding at 7, which is within 2 degrees, I'm just going to, you know what, it's at temp. It's holding within 7. I'm just going to leave it. It seems to be doing pretty decent. I'm going to leave it there. Case is pulling temp. Everything's working dandy. We're just going to go with that. Anyway, I hope you learned something today. Let me know in the comments below if you have any, you know, uh, knowledge, anything you want to share about anything. And, uh, yeah, just please uh, like, subscribe and all that. And uh, that's how you do it.